Okay, so today we're going to take a look at how to look at a graph of speed. So if you guys remember, speed is calculated as your distance over your time. So in your math classes, you learned a little bit about a concept called slope and slope of a line. So in science class, slope gets to actually have meaning. So I'm going to pull up a graph of a story of motion. So here's our lovely graph of motion. If you notice, we have distance from home. Home is going to be our origin down here, zero, zero, on the y-axis. And time in seconds is along the bottom axis. So when you take a look at a slope, you calculate it as your rise over your run, but for us, our rise is distance over time, so our slope is speed. When we take a look at a graph, it's kind of fun because we can also see direction on a graph. So if I'm here and I'm going to start at home and my graph goes like this, I'm not climbing a mountain. That's what kids often think, that you're climbing a mountain. I'm actually just moving away from where I started. When I get to here, I, something changes. So if you notice, I'm not going down a mountain. What I did was simply change direction. And I'm coming back towards my house. Then I change direction again. And I'm going away. And finally, I get to here, and we're going to see what happens as we go through our example. Okay, so we're going to walk through an example of a story of this graph very briefly. And then I'm going to show you how to calculate speed using the slope of the lines. So, in our first section of the line, Scott is our person in our story today. And he leaves his house, and he's walking away from his house towards the bus stop, which is all the way out here, okay? Um, he's going early one morning, and he's moving in this section of the graph at two meters per second. Okay, when Scott gets 100 meters away from his house, you notice he's 100 meters out here, okay, he thought he'd forgotten his science homework. Oh, no, we can't forget our science homework. So he turns around, and he heads back towards his house. He's got lots of time, so he's still walking, but he's going to go a little faster at three meters a second. He makes it 40 meters from his house. Notice he's 40 meters from his house right here at this point when he remembers, oh my goodness, there was no science homework because Mrs. T played Kahoot instead of giving homework. So he turns around again and he hurries now to the bus stop at a speed of four meters a second. And we're going to figure that out. And finally, he makes it to the bus stop with barely any time to spare, and he waits to board the bus for school. And that is the story of Scott. Now, one of the things that you notice is that if he's walking here versus here, he was going two meters a second versus four meters a second. We said that you could play around with the idea of slope. So let's imagine that we were skiing and I'm coming off of my ski lift and I'm gonna go down now. You notice it's super steep, so I'm gonna be going super fast. But if I got off my ski lift right here and I went down this, it's much more gradual, so I'm a little bit slower. So the question is, how do we know exactly how fast we're going without just saying, oh, it's steep, I'm going fast. Oh, it's kind of flat, so I'm going slow. So here's our graph again, and we're going to walk through how to calculate the slope of each chunk of the lines. Now, in order to do the slope, we need our formula. Finally, he makes it to the bus stop with barely any time to spare, and he waits to board the bus for school. And that is the story of Scott. Now, one of the things that you notice is that if he's walking here versus here, he was going two meters a second versus four meters a second. We said that you could play around with the idea of slope. So let's imagine that we were skiing, and I'm coming off of my ski lift, and I'm going to go down now. 
You notice it's super steep, so I'm going to be going super fast. But if I got off my ski lift right here, and I went down this, it's much more gradual, so I'm a little bit slower. So the question is, how do we know exactly how fast we're going without just saying, oh, it's steep, I'm going fast. Oh, it's kind of flat, so I'm going slow. So here's our graph again, and we're going to walk through how we calculate the slope of each chunk of the lines. Now, in order to do the slope, we need our formula, and our formula is distance divided by time. So I'm going to put that right here. Speed is distance divided by time. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to make a right triangle, and I'm going to connect from my starting point to my ending point, and I'm going to go for a right triangle. So, connecting those points, and there's my lovely right triangle. Okay? So, I'm looking to see how much distance I covered on the y-axis and how much time passed on the x-axis. So this one's kind of easy. If I start off and I go s equals, my time here is 0, and my time here is 50. So if I go 50 minus 0, 50 seconds passed. So that's going to go on the bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to go on my y-axis. Again, I'm at 0 right here. When I reach this point, I'm at 100, and 100 minus 0, I've gone 100 meters. So I've got 100 over 50, and my speed is 2 meters a second. Okay, now I'm going to go to where he turns around on the graph. I'm going to get rid of this. This is a smaller right triangle. Okay, so here's my starting point, here's my ending point, I'm going to bring this over, here's my right triangle. Now for today, we're not going to worry about positives and negatives, <laughs> we're just going to calculate how far we went. Okay, we're always just going to keep it as a um, positive number. So again, let's start with our time. Okay, so speed equals, okay, my time right here is 50, okay, right there, my time right here is 70. So this time I'm going to do 70 minus 50, and my time is 20 seconds as fast. Okay, right here is my starting point. I'm at 100, and I'm going to go to 40. So I traveled the difference between those two, 100 minus 40, which is 60 meters in that section. So 60 divided by 20, this is where we said he was going 3 meters a second. Okay, finally our really big chunk, starting point, ending point, I'm going to connect those, nice lovely right triangle. There we go. Okay, speed is distance divided by time. So S equals, right now it's 70. When I get to here, it's 100. So if I go 100 minus 70, my time is 30 seconds as fast. Right here, I'm at the 40 meters. 40. If I go all the way up here, I'm at 160. So this is 160. And the difference between those two, 160 minus 40, is 120. So I've gone 120 meters, which is where he was the fastest. He's going 4 meters a second. Finally, we have this chunk, and we know he's waiting for the bus. Okay? But we're going to do that. You notice I can't make a right triangle anymore because it's a nice flat line. But I can still do my calculation. So I can go S equals. The time right here is 100. The time right here is 120. So if I go 120 minus 100, my time is 20 seconds, so 20 seconds passed. But right here I'm at 160 and I'm still at 160. So if I subtract those two, my position has not changed. So my speed is actually 0 meters a second, and I am not moving at that point along the way. 
So, you are going to try one of these, and you're going to have a story, and you're going to have to do the same thing. You have to calculate how fast Sylvia is going to move in four sections of a graph, and then you have to tell the story. Is she going away? Is she coming towards? Is she stopped at any point along the way? And where does she finally wind up? In this case, we started at home and we went to a bus stop. Okay, so you guys are going to try. Okay, so once you finish your example on your form of Sylvia and you've explained all of her speeds and showed us how you calculated that, and you told us where Sylvia started and where Sylvia arrived and what happened to her along the way, then you're going to try to match up some stories of graphs. So you have all of these options that you're going to be able to see, and then you're going to have a story. So I'm going to read the story for number one, and if you're ready on that page, you can read along with me. So the story for number one, we have a train, and the train leaves the station at 10 a.m., and it reaches Gloucester, which is in England, at 11.30. It stops for a half an hour, and it then carries on for 30 minutes, reaching Worcester 40 kilometers later. So just a couple of quick reminders, okay? On a graph, this is the origin, okay? For us, it could be the train station, it could be your house, it could be any kind of a location that you want to. If I have a section of a line that's going up, again, I am not going uphill. I am moving away from wherever I designate my starting point. If I have a flat section of a graph, we saw in our example that your object stops for a little while. So you have a pause in motion and time along the bottom axis is moving, but the object is going nowhere, okay? Finally, we have another section, and again, it's pointing upward, so the object is continuing away. In this graph over here, it's slightly different. I have an object at an origin, and it's going to go away. We see a pause, but this time we have this down part, down angle. Again, not downhill, okay? This means I'm coming back toward whatever I said my origin was. So it could be I'm coming back to my house, back to the train station, back to a store, whatever you wanted the origin to be. So again, in our first story, we have a coach leaving a station. So that would be the origin. Okay? It's going to pause. So we need a nice flat part. Okay? And then it's going to continue on. So it's going to continue going away. So our options, it could be this one because it's going away, stop, away. It could be this one. It could be this one. Or it could be this one. So I need another hint, because I've got four options. Okay, so once you finish your example on your form of Sylvia, and you've explained all of her speeds and showed us how you calculated that, and you told us where Sylvia started and where Sylvia arrived and what happened to her along the way, then you're going to try to match up some stories of graphs. So you have all of these options that you're going to be able to see, and then you're going to have a story. So I'm going to read the story for number one, and if you're ready on that page, you can read along with me. So the story for number one, we have a train, and the train leaves the station at 10 a.m., and it reaches Gloucester, which is in England, at 11.30. It stops for a half an hour, and it then carries on for 30 minutes, reaching Worcester 40 kilometers later. So just a couple of quick reminders, okay? On a graph, this is the origin, okay? For us, it could be the train station. It could be your house. It could be any kind of a location that you want to. If I have a section of a line that's going up, again, I am not going uphill. I am moving away from wherever I designate my starting point. If I have a flat section of a graph, we saw in our example 
that your object stops for a little while. So you have a pause in motion. And time along the bottom axis is moving, but the object is going nowhere. Okay. Finally, we have another section. And again, it's pointing upward, so the object is continuing away. In this graph over here, it's slightly different. I have an object at an origin. It's going to go away. We see a pause. But this time, we have this down part. Down angle, again, not downhill. Okay? This means I'm coming back toward whatever I said my origin was. So it could be I'm coming back to my house, back to the train station, back to a store, whatever you wanted the origin to be. So again, in our first story, we have a coach leaving a station. So that would be the origin. Okay? It's going to pause. So we need a nice flat part. Okay? And then it's going to continue on. So it's going to continue going away. So our options, it could be this one because it's going away, stop, away. It could be this one. It could be this one. Or it could be this one. So I need another hint because I've got four options. So I'm going to read again. And it says I'm doing kilometers and hours. So this one says miles and hours. Can't be that. This one also says miles and, hour, miles and minutes. Can't be this. So these two are gone. Even though they match the description of what the train is doing, they don't have the right unit. So I narrowed down to this. This says kilometers an hour. So does this. Could be one of those. So I'm going to read again. It says it stops for half an hour. So I'm going to check this one. This goes from two to four in hours. That stopped for two hours. This one over here, okay, my stop is from this, which isn't marked, to here, which says two. But that says one. So that means that's one and a half to two. This one stopped for a half an hour. So my correct answer to number one that you guys are going to match up, number one in your drop down menu should be C. And then you can cross that off because you can't use it again. Okay, have fun matching the rest of them.